The Canon M50 Mark II is an excellent camera for a lot of different uses, and vlogging is one of them. When paired with the right lenses and accessories, this camera can capture beautiful, professional-looking B-roll of anything at all, and it can absolutely nail vlogging shots. The size and price point of the Canon M50 Mark II is key, because when you spend less money and less carry space on a camera body, you end up with more money and more carry space for things like lenses and gimbals, and these are what really make the difference in the look of the shot. Hello my friend and welcome to part three of this new series all about this new camera. I'm Alicia May Herte and today we are talking about vlogging on the Canon M50 Mark II and the exact gear setup that I use to capture the best possible vlogging shots and cinematic style b-roll. These are items that I've aligned to work with all of my cameras in the M series so all of this information and suggestions will apply for use with the original Canon M50 or the Canon M6 Mark II, which is another great option. In an effort to match the spirit of these cameras, my goal when pairing accessories with these is to find things that are as lightweight and as simple to use as possible. Now, this doesn't mean that the setup isn't sometimes complex or a good bit to carry, but I do think in a lot of situations it's absolutely worth it because the extra quality it adds to the shot just gives it so much more of a professional look than what you would get with the kit lens and no gimbal, for example. So stick around to the end of this video to see some comparisons with and without the use of these accessories and let me know what you think. And if you're really looking for a deep dive into using the Canon M50 and ready to learn everything that you can about it, then jump on my email list via the link below because very soon I will have some in-depth information going out that will really push you to the next level of using your Canon M50, especially for video. Okay, so let's talk about the actual gear that went into these shots in addition to the Canon M50 Mark II. So on this setup, I've got the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 aperture lens. It is an EFM mount. That means the mount is made specifically for the Canon M50 and the Canon M6 Mark II. This is an amazing lens. It is the only lens that is wide enough for vlogging. So it's wide enough for you to get a handheld vlogging shot and hold it at this distance and still fit into the scene and fit other things in behind you. And what is so amazing about this lens, what makes it, you know, the reason you wanna buy it instead of using the kit lens is that large aperture, the F1.4. So smaller number, larger aperture. This is gonna give you more natural light, allowing for a less grainy image because you don't need to raise the ISO as much if you don't have enough light. If the largest aperture on your lens on a crop sensor camera is an f4 or something like that, then you will struggle in low light. Oh wow, because it's like it's bright. Uh, dark out here. It's brighter than real life. Look how bright we are. Yeah, that is bright. And it gives you this nice foreground blur and bokeh in certain situations and just general separation from the background. This separation from the background is especially nice in vlogging situations because you can't always style the background or choose a nice background. So if you've got like messy chaos going on behind you, then that separation from the background is going to help set your shot apart. We have Ella right here. If that's <laughs> So here is the difference between the Sigma 16 millimeter and the M50 kit lens, which is a 15 to 45 millimeter with a F3.5 aperture. I do have this zoomed in just a tad to match the 16, but you can definitely see the difference in the blurriness of the background because we don't have that F1.4, which is what the Sigma is set at. Now, Sigma does make a trio of EFM lenses with a 1.4 aperture. There's also a 30 millimeter and a 56 millimeter, which are amazing for capturing B-roll of your surroundings and just other stuff you might want to incorporate into a vlog or shoot for other reasons. But the 16 millimeter is absolutely what you need to use for vlogging because it's the only one that is wide enough to capture a handheld vlogging shot. So this is me holding it conservatively close to my body. And then this is if I were to hold it out <laughs> all the way far out, which I don't generally do, but here is about where it would look normally. And even the 16 millimeter is fun sometimes for B-roll of things close up or for wide spaces where you just want to fit it all in. It just gives you that nice wide look. You can also use EF or EFS mount lenses with the Canon M50 and any of the cameras in the Canon M series. You just have to use one of these adapters, which does add to the overall size of the lens, but it's great because it opens up all of those options for different lenses you can pair. And I am hoping that somebody, whether it's Canon or Sigma, will release some more EFM mount lenses for this series of cameras soon. And on to the variable ND filter. This is a variable three-stop ND filter by Freewell. It comes in a two-pack. There's a 
two to five and a six to nine stop. And that just refers to how much density the ND filter puts on the camera. It's kind of confusing the proper reason that you want to use ND filters. I have a whole video on it if you really want to catch up and understand how it applies to the settings. But there's kind of a whole other reason I really love to use these while I'm vlogging. And that is because when I'm vlogging, the ND filter is right on the front. So all I have to do if I were to move slightly and the lighting changed, say it got darker, I would just take out some of the ND <laughs> that I had on there. So it's kind of a weird example, but it's a, you know, just a quick and easy and dirty way to control exposure. It's not the proper way to control exposure. You definitely want to go into your camera settings and set everything correctly for exposure. But when you're vlogging, sometimes it's just on the fly. Sometimes you're mid-sentence and it's just super convenient to reach right there to the front of the camera, give it a little twist and get the exposure you need. Okay, so when it comes to mics, I always recommend using some sort of external mic while you're vlogging. You're just going to get much better sound that way. And you can use a shotgun mic on top of the camera, which you probably see a lot of vloggers using. But what I like to use is the Rode Wireless Go. I love this mic because it is super discreet. It is super simple. All it is is this tiny transmitter on top of the camera and then, sorry, receiver on top of the camera and then the transmitter, which you just clip right inside your shirt. They make it in both black and white. So you have that option there. And the only thing about it um, as opposed to having it on top of your camera where the audio is being recorded up there is that it really is primarily on you, the vlogger, which is great if like you're the only one talking to the camera. Um, Rode did just release the Rode Wireless Go 2, which is even better because what it is is the same receiver but with two transmitters. And you can do a dual channel setup so you can choose which transmitter you want to put into your final cut of the video. Um, so I have the Rode Wireless Go 2 going on right now, and I have the second transmitter. In this, this is the Interview Go. This is not a stick mic, it's just a stick <laughs> and, a, and a wind muff. So that second piece clips under there. You can put this second piece on like if you're partnering, if you're vlogging with a partner or somebody, that's a good idea. But this is cool because if you're vlogging, but then you decide you want to capture some sound that's sort of outside of what you're shooting, you can just aim this wherever. So we'll just do some crunching leaves. <laughs> okay. Or I can talk right into it, which <laughs> I would probably not do because it kind of makes me feel like a, a sports newscaster. But yes, the power of the Rode Wireless Go 2 is endless and it's just a really great discreet mic for vlogging. And it's also great that it's so small, I can just pop it on top of my camera while it is on the gimbal and it doesn't throw off the balance too much. Which brings me to the elephant in the room, <laughs> which is the gimbal. So what I'm using with the Canon M50 is the Zhiyun Weibull S gimbal. I was looking for the smallest gimbal that was still powerful enough to handle the Canon M50. And I think of all the gimbals I know of, this is probably the best choice right now. Maybe, maybe not. I haven't tried every single gimbal, but I do love this one. It's very powerful. I can get some epic, super smooth shots with it. It's very easy to handle. It's very easy to balance. One thing I really like about it that is super unique is this sling design. So what that means is that you can take the feet off of it, attach it here. And it doesn't really apply to vlogging. It's gonna be more for uh, when you're getting B-roll. And then you can hold the camera and get these really super smooth, epic shots. And another thing I love about the sling design and just the fact that you can hold it like this is that when you're vlogging, if you wanna just kind of be casual for a minute, especially travel vlogging, in between shots, it's just easier to kind of like hang out with the gimbal if you're holding it like this. It's very different from having to, in between shots, hold it more like a sign than like a shopping bag. So this would be like if you were just kind of hanging out in between shots, you'd have to hold it like this. It's just more discreet to have it like way down. I don't know, it's not like people aren't gonna notice it, but I think it's just really comfortable. So that's one reason I love the underslung design on the Zhiyun Weibull S. And I should probably address at this point whether or not it's heavy. I get asked that a lot and the answer is yes, it is heavy. Um, it's a lot to hold, you know, for vlogging. It's, it's definitely the price you pay to get that like super smooth vlogging shot. And I personally, my arm strength is not the greatest, but it's not the worst, I guess. But if I were holding it out like this, the further out you hold it, the heavier. 
Um, I would probably start to get a little shaky and disoriented after, I don't know, 30 seconds. But I think that is fine because I think it's better in vlogging to keep your talking shots kind of short and sweet and just say something that ties in everything else you're filming and what you're talking about. And yeah, I don't know. It, it may be not as heavy to other people. In fact, we can get a second opinion right here. <laughs> Caden is a um, DJI Ronin user. He used to use the S and now he uses the S2. Come on over, come on over. Get your hands on the Zhiyun. <laughs> what do you think, is it heavy? It's heavy, yeah. It's not too bad, I mean, you can, I don't really vlog, so but I don't really have much to did. compare it to. If I did, it would be a little bit of a pain, but it depends how long you're shooting for, you know? Right. If you're just doing quick shots, it's really not bad. Yeah. And you can handle the Ronin S all the time without it being heavy. Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of hold it tight when I'm. Right. And it's definitely different when you're holding it out, obviously. Do you think it's worth it for the I, smoothness? I think it gets a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what happens if you try to put a 30 millimeter on a vlogging camera. <laughs> I got to hold it way off. <laughs> so that's not ideal. But it is interesting, um, the differences in the gimbals, and we're gonna try, we're gonna do a comparison at some point of the different gimbals, because he has a lot of gimbals. This is the Ronin S2, and before this, you were using the Ronin S. RS. RS, yeah. right, so. Or sorry, SC. SC. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of... I, I don't like the naming. I wish yeah, they keep just... changing it up too, so yeah. it's confusing. Yeah, we're going to compare a lot of gimbals soon to see what really might be the best one for the Canon M50, because the idea is to get the smallest, most lightest weight gimbal that can handle the M50 well, because these gimbals are built to handle a lot more than the M50. And um, we don't need all of that, but we do need something. Good. Okay, let's just trade back. I'm very disoriented holding this. <laughs> so if all of this seems like a bit much, don't worry. I totally get it. If you're just getting started out vlogging, you can definitely just grab the Canon M50, either version, flip out that screen, hold it facing towards you, and start vlogging. You will have to work to keep it steady, but shaking this shouldn't be a huge problem if you're on a wide lens, as long as you're not moving too, too much. So just to see the difference, here's a demo of me walking and talking, vlogging with no stabilization applied whatsoever versus me doing the same thing but using a gimbal. And I was walking and I was talking and it was so much fun and there was all this stuff and then we were just like walking and here's what it looks like. Trying to hold it steady, walking and talking, moving around, running with the gimbal. I don't know why you would ever do this. And as for audio, of course you're gonna get a better sound with an external mic plugged into the camera, but if you were to use it in an environment that wasn't very windy, it might sound a little something like this. And here's the natural in-camera audio on the Canon M50 Mark II, but it is a very calm, quiet day, and it's very humid here in Florida. I think that air, that water in the air helps absorb some of the sound. Um, so, but generally speaking, there can be all sorts of factors that ruin the sound of the audio on an in-camera mic. And here it is with the Rode mic. I'm sure it sounds much, much better with the Rode mic. If you'd like to learn more about vlogging on the Canon M50 Mark II, be sure to check out the other videos in this series. They are all linked below. The video immediately prior to this is all about vlogging on the M50 Mark II, where I take it out for the very first time and just talk about some of the special circumstances and things you might want to consider when vlogging on this camera. I also go over all of the upgrades that were made to the Mark II over the original Canon M50. And then also the next video in this series is going to be about the settings that you're gonna to wanna to plug in and use on this camera to get the best possible shots. So it's very important that you're using the right settings and not just the um, auto settings. I know manual camera mode sounds very scary and confusing, but once you learn it, it's totally worth it. And that's really how you're gonna get the most out of your Canon M50. All right, guys, so leave me a comment below with the questions that you might have about vlogging on the Canon M50 Mark II, and I will see you all in the very next video. Bye.